Hi. In this um, in this uh, lesson, we're going to discuss angle of measurement. It's on page five hundred five. Okay. First of all, let's describe an angle. Uh, an angle is formed when we have two rays. A ray is a line that's going has a definite beginning, but it's going on forever in another direction. When these two rays come together at a common point called the vertex, we form a angle. An angle is measured counterclockwise going this way. If the bottom line is called the initial side and the top is the terminal side. So we have an initial and a terminal and the angle is going that way. And we can define this angle, we can call it uh, different things. We'll get into that in just a second. But we measure this angle, the amount of degrees in here by using uh, a protractor. And uh, let's say this is 30 degrees. So we can measure that out by using a protractor. We're not going to use a protractor in here, but that's how normally an angle is measured. The other thing is, uh, uh, let's look at the different kinds of angles and we'll talk about them a little bit. <clears throat> when we have an angle that's less than 90, and which we, before we do that, let's, let's de define these angles. Let's call this, a, and the vertex is always the middle number C, B, C. So what we could do is we label this as angle A, but we want to put the vertex always right there in the middle, A, B, C. We could also call this angle C, B, A. See, the vertex is in the middle. So we kind of go around it this way or this way. Or we could just call this angle B if we want to. Angle B right here. So we can call it by different things. If we're looking for the measure, sometimes we put a little M in front of here. That means we want the measure of this angle. And you know, sometimes we don't put it in front. But you know, if an angle is less than 90, and we would show this as uh, what's called angle B is less than 90 degrees. It would be called an acute angle. If it's equal to 90 degrees, you know, let's put an angle sign in front of it. Then that would be a right angle. And they usually have a little box in them like that to designate that this is a right angle. Acute angle, right angle. And of course, if it's greater than 90, that would be going this way, greater than 90 degrees, then it's obtuse, something like this, obtuse. So an angle less than 90 might be like uh, 60 degrees. Angle greater than 90 might be 120 degrees. And then if the angle, and you might not have ever thought about this, is exactly straight, 180 degrees, that's called a straight angle. So these are our basic types of angles, acute, right, which we probably use the most, and straight, which we can use it. Another interesting thing about two angles, Let's say we have two angles, but they have a common side. They're sharing a common side, this angle right here and this angle right here. They're sharing that common side. And if it's just a straight line, then we call these supplementary angles. Let me slide this down a little bit. Supplementary, supplementary. And supplementary means that these two angles, let's call this angle A and this angle B in here, those two angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. Angle A 
plus angle B equals 180. So I could have something like this. Uh, let's say where I have 120 degrees here, pretty big angle. And then this angle right here would be 60 degrees. Also, we put the little degree sign there. You see, and then we would say those are supplementary because they form a straight line. The way I remember this is that I have my supper on a table. So I can think of this as a table that I'm eating off of. Supplementary, not a great drawing, but I'm not an artist. Okay, here's our right angle. We could split it up into two parts. And maybe one is 60 degrees and the other one's 30 degrees. Those two angles form a right angle. If they are joined together, they share a common side. We call that an adjacent side. And uh, they share, share this common side. These are called complementary. And these two angles will add up to 90 degrees, a right angle, right angle. So these will add up to 90 degrees. So supple, and the way I remember it, the right thing to do is to pay somebody a compliment. The right thing you can do is pay somebody a compliment. So if we look at these angles in the book, right here, I can tell this is an acute angle, less than 90, acute, obtuse, right angle. I'm assuming it's a right angle, straight angle. Here's one that's kind of drawn a little weird, but it, it looks like it's going to be less than 90. So that would be an acute angle. And of course, we don't have a device to measure them right now, but we can kind of tell. So we kind of know about those. Also, when two angles, a right angle is sometimes called a perpendicular angle. If, if, if this is a straight up and down from this, then we say it's perpendicular to the base or bottom. This line is perpendicular to this base line. Okay. Um, so we kind of know a couple of little things. One other thing that comes in very handy about angles, let's put it right here, is that when angles kind of cross each other like that, these are called vertical angles. And you can kind of see they're also supplementary, huh? They would form a 180 degrees here. But this angle right here, let's say this angle is 45 degrees. Then this angle is also going to be 45 degrees. They kind of form a V and uh, a V and an upside down V. And those are vertical angles. They're going to be equal. Angle A will equal angle B, whatever it is. Let's, let's change it to 65 degrees. Then this will be 65 degrees. They're going to be equal. This angle right here, because they are supplementary, these two angles would have to add up to 180. So if I took 180 and I subtracted 65 from it, borrow a little bit here, that would give me 115. 115 and 65 add up to 180. So this angle would have to be 115. And this angle is vertical to it. So it'd be 115. And you can see 65 and a 115, 180, 180, 180, 180. If you add all these angles together, you're going to get a circle. And a circle has 360 degrees in it. So all these angles should add up to 360 because they form, you know, here's 180, here's 180. 360. So if you add all those angles together, you get 360, kind of circular. So that's not quite in the book, but you know, so that's an important concept, vertical angles. There's also 
you know, the book goes on and shows alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles. I, I don't want to get in all that uh, stuff. I don't want to go crazy on this. Uh, I just want to look at angles, you know. Sometimes we can also me measure angles in degrees and minutes, okay, just like time. There's 60 degrees, there's 60 minutes in that degree. So sometimes, you know, a very precise definition would be the angle might be 35 degrees and 15. We show it with a little line like that. It means minutes, 35 degrees, 15 minutes. You know, so sometimes you might see a notation like that. And uh, that's something that comes up sometimes. Okay. What else do we have here? Okay, so if we have two parallel lines, parallel lines mean that these two lines are not going to intersect each other. They're going to keep on going like train tracks. They're just going to keep on going. And they're cut by a line like this. This is called a transversal. It's just a, a line that cuts through them. Okay, technical term, transversal. So two parallel lines. And the way to show them sometimes is this is line one, line two. And we say line one is parallel. And there's a symbol for it to the other one. If we want them perpendicular, we, we sometimes draw like this with a little thing like that. That means perpendicular. But we want, them, we want these two lines to be parallel. Okay. And let's say they randomly just gave us an angle here, and we want to find all the other ones. Uh, let's say this angle right here was 70, just for the heck of it. And this is going to be angle A, angle B, angle C, angle D. I just randomly put in these E, F, and G. And we want to find these. So we can be a detective and kind of try to find them. Let's, let's start with this one right here, the CFG. First of all, I know that this angle, let's see if I can highlight it with something. This angle right here, and this angle right here are vertical, right? So this has to be 70, 70 degrees right there. And then we can see that this is a straight line. So those have to be supplementary. This E and F are supplementary. So 180 minus 70 will give us 110. So that should equal this angle right here. I'm going to use something maybe a little darker. There we go. And if that's 110, then this has to be 110. I probably didn't draw these real accurate, the angles themselves, but just to get the idea. So 70, 70. So now we know E, let's, let's list these. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so now we know E is 70. We know F is 110. And there was a G. G is also 110 degrees, degrees, degrees. Okay, what about A, B, C? Well, this angle, see this angle right here? This angle looks about the same, doesn't it? If you look at it, let's forget about this part. Just looking, it's kind of like a backward seven, huh? So we can tell that that's going to be 70 also. If that's 70, this has to be 70. And this has to be 70 from 180, 110. And this has to be 110. So now we know A is 110. B is 70. C is 70. And D is 110. So we can find those missing angles. So we can play a little game there, you know. You can just try to match them up. Okay. 
What else do we know? Well, let's see if there's something else we need to know. If we have a triangle, any triangle, the angles of this triangle, the angles inside here, all have to add up to 180. Let's label this A, B, C. So we could say this is a triangle a, B, C. But the angles have to equal 180 degrees. So if this was, say, 70, and this was 30, 70 and 30 is 100, this would have to be 80. These angles all have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, the interior angles of a triangle all add up to 180. Okay, we have some special ones. We have a right angle. So if this was 90, these two angles would be the same. They both have to be 45 degrees because they would both be equal. If we turn that angle kind of like this, Let's write it again. Here's 90, 45, 45. When two base angles are the same and then the other angle is different, we call that isosceles, I-S-S-O-C-E-L-E-L-L-E-S. -S -E -L -L -E I don't know, something like that, isosceles. And if all the angles were the same, 60, 60, 60, that would be equilateral. And the two sides, the sides would all be equal. On an isosceles triangle, only two sides are equal. The third side can be different. But here they'd all be the same. They'd all be equal. Isosceles. So, we're going to take a look here on page uh, 513, and we're going to take a look at a couple of things. Naming the angles would be pretty easy, but let's let's take a look here on page 514. It says use a protractor to find these, but we don't have a protractor, so we're going to try to do it by mathematics. Here we have a triangle, A, B. C, this is number one, this is on page 514, uh, B, section B, and then this is problem number 2A, one, or 2A. Uh, this is 60, and this right here is 52. And so I want to find what is angle A. I could do it by measuring if it was drawn accurate, but let's try it this way. Let's add B and C together. That's 112. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that sum and subtract it from 180. We could get all fancy about it. I'll write it out in a minute. And you could use your calculator, 8, which comes to 7 and a 10, 68. You can add these together and double check it. So this angle right here has to be 68 degrees for them to add up to 180, 180. So uh, let me uh, show you how I could write this real formal. formal uh, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180. Angle A plus 60 plus 52 equals 180. Add those together. Plus, and then subtract that from both sides. You know, so we could get very formal about doing this, but just common sense tells us that these angles and you want to show the degree sign, 68. 
Oh, that's all there is to it. What about this one? This is uh, E. How can I find those missing angles? Well, we know these three angles have to add up to 180, huh? So 180 minus 40 is 140. So these two angles are going to have to add up to 140. So if we took 140 and we divided it by 2, we get 70. This angle is 70, and this angle is 70. So just common sense, subtract from the 180. That'll give you the measurement of these two angles. Now we're split it because both these angles are the same. The reason we know they're the same is they give them the same name. Okay. And this is a isosceles triangle. Okay. So I don't think it's too hard to find those. You might have to do it. Here's another problem that might be a little interesting. Here we have a line, something like that. Looks like this is kind of coming off of it. This is Q, this is W, this is 60 degrees, this is 150 degrees, and this is P. And we're trying to figure out what these missing angles are. Well, first of all, I look at these two right here. This line coming down here. That's a straight line. That's 180 degrees. These two angles, if I was, let me turn my paper a little bit this way and I might visualize it a better. This angle and this angle have to add up to what? 180. So 180 minus 150 is 30. We know this is a 30 degree angle, see? 30 plus 150. It's a little bit harder to visualize it that way, huh? And what do you see about this right here? These are vertical angles. They both have to be the same. So we see there's a vertical angle in here. So it's kind of like we're playing detective here. Now we know that's 30. And these three angles right here, this one, this one, and this one right here have to add up to 180. Well, these are already 90. You could have three angles there. This is 90, so this would have to be 90 degrees, see? So now we figured it out. So P is 30, Q is 30. W is 90, and that was it. We just had to find the three of them, and now we found it. At these three angles, but you'd have to find this angle first in order to find Q. So you need to find P first and find Q. All right. Uh, I think you got the idea. So that's all we're going to do on angles on this particular one. And then next time, we're going to talk about perimeter and area. Okay, so I hope this came in handy, makes a little sense to you.